So one common complaint I hear is how people have a hard time marathoning anime the way they used to. Whether it's binge watching a 12 episode series or maybe even 6 episode settings, they're having a hard time with that. So this video contains tips and tricks on how I watch as much anime as I do so that you can watch an unhealthy amount of anime too. And not, I'm joking by the way, this video is not about unhealthy things like just sit in a chair for 8 hours and don't move your body. It's not about that. I try and have a, a more balanced approach to marathoning anime than that. So, the reason why I'm making this video is because I'm currently working on the Gekige no Kitaro franchise review, and I thought the video would just be best to watch everything and just get it over with and instead of having a bunch of smaller reviews and repeating myself, similar to Cyborg 009. What differentiates this from Cyborg is that this is like five series, or six series, and each entry is between... 60 and 110 episodes, plus the movies, plus the manga, and if I feel like torturing myself enough, the live-action movie. So first things first, I want to talk about scheduling, because this is an important aspect in everyone's life. A lot of people struggle with finding enough time to watch anime simply because they have all of these other things as their life has become more complicated with school, work, family, friends, dating, whatever, you know, you got so many things in your life that you've deemed as being more important than anime, it's only natural that you realize that you've deemed anime less important than all of these other things and give yourself less time to watch it and naturally have less expectations out of being able to complete shows. Like, if you've only got two hours of free time a day, you're not gonna fully utilize those two hours by watching five or six episodes of anime just because you're going to want to sit down and unwind for a little bit and decompress and not just focus on some sort of entertainment. Or at least, you know, that that's what I assume most people would be like. But there's that. And a lot of people are stressed out about this because they want to keep up with all the seasonal shows. One, don't just watch seasonal anime. There's tons of anime. And two, it's really, it really comes down to your schedule and you can't compare your priorities to other people's priorities because like me, for example, I watch a ton of it and it's a much higher priority for me than it is for other people who have all of these other things in life and I chose to do this with anime. So it's really a, a big difference in priorities and just don't stress yourself over the differences in how much time you can devote to it. Just watch it at your own pace and be relaxed by that. So I guess I could go into the scheduling that I used when I would watch a lot of anime. And this is what I did back when I did the daily anime movie OVA and series reviews. I would watch six episodes in the morning and then around lunchtime I would just work on whatever it is I needed to work on through the day. And then after dinner I would watch six more episodes and then after whatever time is left after that I just consider that free time. So it was roughly 100 or 110 hour work weeks there. And it was really easy for me because six episodes in the morning and six episodes at night of a different anime, it was just nice switching things up and having different experiences. And I don't expect everybody to watch 12 episodes of anime every day. But the thing is, if you've only got like an hour to watch anime, and you're not watching something that's like an 8, 9, or 10 out of 10 experience, but you're still interested in it, perhaps switching up anime and alternating episodes between two different series would be more enjoyable to you and just encourage you to sit there and focus on it for longer periods of time. And that's what helped me out. However, I can't watch anime like that anymore because I, it's just hard for me to write scripts when I've got thoughts about multiple anime bouncing around in my head, so I just watch one anime. And that is pretty tiring, especially when it's 50 episodes or like Gegege no Kitaro where it's hundreds and I'm exhausted <laughs> with that. So next up, we've got caffeine. And this is something that probably relates to almost everyone watching this video. The way I was able to do some of the things that I just mentioned was because I had a three or four cup insulated pourable thermos on my desk and I would have a mug next to that and every episode I would pour a couple sips into it or maybe every 20 or 30 minutes just a couple sips of green tea and I'll drink that so it's a smaller amount of caffeine deployed evenly throughout the day and you just have this constant uh, flow of a small amount of caffeine. I used to do the exact opposite or I would in the mornings I'd have this espresso pot put it on the stove and 
I would chug like five shots of espresso. I don't recommend this, but I would do a ton of work and then just pass out because I've borrowed all my energy. So keeping that even flow of caffeine that's a very small amount definitely helped me out. But to be fair, I haven't drunk any caffeine in months and I don't know if I'll go back or not. I just did this as a personal experience. It is harder to focus, but it's getting easier as I just get away from that. So the next tip pertains to what language you're watching the anime in. And I used to be a huge advocate for watching dubbed anime because I grew up on the VHS dubbed kung fu movies and they were terrible quality. Some were subbed, but I preferred the dub just because they were easier to watch for me as a kid. Eventually graduated to subbed Kurosawa movies, thankfully. I don't think they ever tried to dub those. And eventually on to anime. And by that point, my sub to dub ratio was like 50-50. But I always preferred a good dub because it was in my language. It was a relaxing experience for me. So I could just sit there and enjoy it more because I was able to do things like check my phone or get up and clean or do all this other stuff and think I'm still paying attention, but I'm not because I'm only consuming 50% of the information given to me because my eyes are off the screen even though I'm still listening. So that was a major problem for me, and I'm not saying that's a problem for everyone watching dubbed anime, but it might be for some who have an issue with paying attention. And it's not that things like cleaning or checking my phone are more enjoyable to me than watching anime. I don't want to check my phone. I wish I didn't have to have one other than GPS and other things like that. I wish I didn't have to have it. It's just this unnecessary expense, but I'm constantly compulsively pulling it out just to get that reassurance that I'm still a forlorn misanthrope. But like, even though it's punishment checking social media, I can't help that I do it. But with watching subtitled anime, it forces you to pay attention to it. And some I've heard some people say that it's harder to focus on subtitled anime, but that's how it was for me at first too, when I was just exclusively watching it, which has been for the past year and a half. So at first it was harder for me to watch subbed only anime, and then eventually it became so much easier, and it also had other beneficial factors in other areas of my life. Like for one, um, I'm not picking up my phone habitually anymore to check these things. I can go cook without taking the phone with me or and doing things like that. I can just wake up and not check social media because it's just, it's a habitual thing. You're not checking it because you're actually getting something out of it. It's just a habit. So I'm breaking the habit with subtitled anime and it's also more beneficial for me as a reviewer because I'm able to focus a lot more on the anime itself because I'm sitting there looking at it. If I fall asleep or do get distracted by something, I know that I haven't seen it because I can't understand the audio to it, so I either have to go back or have to restart the episode. So it's much more beneficial that way. So the next, and also I guess you could say the stress of choosing anime is increased by the amount of choice that you have. With the internet, we can choose almost anything. and we can watch whatever we want. So that in itself is kind of a burden. So in many ways in life, I've been reducing the amount of choices that I have in things so that I have less stress with that. Like with anime, for example, I've been doing the chronological order watch through and I know I'm a weirdo for that one, but in addition to not having to think about the production studio, the decade, the director, the art style, the genre, all these other things to think about, I now also don't have to think about what language to watch it in because whether or not the sub or dub is any good used to be another issue for me. So the next up we've got just something to keep your hands or your body busy while you're doing it. Actually I've got this uh, what is it? It's like a grip strength trainer here and I will actually just use this. It's killing two birds with one stone because I'm increasing my muscles. Sometimes I'll work out and watch anime, but it's kind of harder to do when it's subbed. That was another thing I would do with dubbed anime. But I just have something in my hands like this or a, Ru or a Rubik's Cube or really anything you can do with your hands that is a thing that you can do that doesn't require focus. And uh, it's also got the added benefit of people don't want to shake my hands because I crush up because this goes to like 90 pounds and I think I've got it set in like 
65 pounds right now, so it's pretty awesome. Oh, and I almost forgot, I don't sit down the entire time I watch anime. I'll watch maybe one or two episodes sitting down, then I will get up and maybe I'll do some stretches or something like that, and I will get on the exercise bike that I have and I'll watch a couple episodes like that and then I'll get back in the chair or I will switch other positions and that kind of segues into the next tip that I have, which is don't sit in the same place for such a long period of time. Get up and take breaks and do other things like that. So I also have a way to lay in bed and watch anime. So I will go lay down and watch anime, which it, it works depending on how well rested you are. Of course, that's another big tip here is just being well rested, which is something I struggle with because you don't want to fall asleep. But just having all of these different options to sit down and watch anime and so you're not stuck in that same position for hours on end because that's not unhealthy it's not good for your veins and stuff like that you're sitting down it's just not good for your body in general so and oh yeah and the quality of the things that you have to sit in is also another big aspect but i understand that everybody ha can't afford certain things um i i know this because i used to sit my computer chair broke for a while and i couldn't sit on anything. The only thing I had was a, a broken CRT to sit on, and it wasn't one of those square PVMs. It was like, it was shaped kind of like this, and I could only sit on that little flat strip on the top. And I was hunched over at the desk sitting on that hard piece of plastic, and I couldn't move my feet back because there's glass under there, and <laughs> it was not a comfortable experience. And I think I sat on that for like a year. So I understand it, but being comfortable in where you sit in, in however you experience anime is also a massive contributing factor to your attention span because if you're not comfortable you're not going to want to sit there and do the things that you're doing. In terms of office chairs, there's a certain type of office chair that I would, you know, I have to get from now on. Like some people get those racing chairs, but I can't imagine how they could ever be comfortable because I've had chairs similar to them in the past where it's like this fake leather and your skin kind of sticks to it and then it starts to crack and then the crackly bits start digging into your skin. It's just not comfortable, especially in the summer. And what I have now is a mesh chair. This is the exact one I have, though it's no longer available on Amazon, so you can't buy it. But I really like it for many different reasons. First of all, it is mesh construction on a harder, like, plastic frame, so it's breathable. In the summer, it's great. You can just sit on it, and the air flows through it. But I also disassemble the headset here, so if I want it, I can have it. You know, I can put it like this. It's tied to some paracord. If not, I can just flip it back and get it out of the way. Another great thing about this, and I think it's very important if you're in the market for office chairs, is when you lean back in it, the armrests go with you. Because a lot of those chairs, especially the the racing seat ones, the arms just stay just parallel to the seat pan, and you can't use that when laying back, so you've got to do like this, and that's annoying. So this is great because I can lay back and do like this. And even I've got things like... Uh, I've got like trackball mice and whatnot that I can use the computer from the bed or I can have my legs kicked up and I've got the trackball mice and I've got like a little left-handed keyboard thing that's just got like certain button functions and whatnot. But it, it, comfort is a major thing. It's worth investing in and it will just allow you to uh, watch more anime. So the next tip is note taking and this works wonders for me as a reviewer because every anime that I watch, I've got every single episode, I just type down everything that I feel and everything that I think is important that happens like I'm some courtroom stenographer or something and I just type everything down. I have two monitors to do that on so it's not like I'm diverting my eyes from the, the anime itself, I'm just typing everything down that happens that I think is relevant and it's pretty I mean, it's not uncomfortable to do that, but doing that allows me to focus more and it also gives me the added bonus of if I forget something or have a partial memory of something, I can just look up all of these old files that I have and I can just type in a keyword and it'll go right to something and I know what episode it happened on and that's great for video editing so you don't have to look through the entire series for that one like three second clip. You know at least what episode it's on. So that is a huge help for me right there. Uh, next up we've got taking uh, breaks. And I've already talked about that in terms of sitting in different places, but I think it's important to just take breaks and stop watching it if you're watching it for longer periods of time. Like I'll do the 
maybe uh, six or ten episode just binge watch sessions, and I will maybe take one or two breaks in between. Depending on how I feel, I'll do different things. Like if I'm feeling exhausted and I need something to pick me up, then maybe I'll pop on for a game of Pavlov VR because that's kind of gets my adrenaline running there because it's actual a competitive environment where people are shooting at you and you're just dodging bullets and peeking around corners and getting people sneaking up on them. It gets your heart rate going and uh, it just picks me up so that I can watch more. But if I'm having a really good time watching the anime, then I just want to bring it down a bit and I'll go take like a 15 minute nap or something like that and I'll come back. Maybe I'll clean or I'll go get a snack or something. Just get up, stretch your legs, walk around, go outside, get some sun, something like that. And it's just... Uh, it just aids your overall well-being and also your ability to focus on what you're doing. Um, that is basically it. Aside from being well-rested, I have issues with that. So I'm kind of a hypocrite in that regard, so I can't really talk about that. But uh, being well-rested is a massive factor. And the days that I am well-rested, which is kind of rare, I'm able to focus for so much more time. And the days that I'm not, I'm just struggling, trying to stay awake because it's... It's hard, like today I slept four hours, so it's kind of a mess sometimes. But anyways, hopefully these tips help you out in marathoning some anime so that you can get going and really enjoy some of these shows. So are there any shows you're looking forward to marathoning right now? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you soon, hopefully coming Friday or Saturday with Gegege no Kitaro. See ya.